Jai Shibata Ji. Good morning everyone. Let's collectively bow down to Mother, raise our Kundalini and put on a bandhan. Jai Shri Mataji, Mother, please give us the permission to meditate on your holy lotus feet this morning. As we surrender our day on your holy lotus feet, Jai Shri Mataji. Let's put both of our hands on or towards Mother Earth and pray to Shumata Ji, Mother, please remove all negativities within us and dissolve them into Mother Earth. Shumata Ji, please purify 
and strengthen our Muladhar Chakra. Please bless us with the qualities of Sri Ganesha. The qualities of innocence, wisdom, purity, Mataji, please remove all badhas and negativities within us and on our muladhar chakras and dissolve them into Mother Earth. Mother, we humbly bow down to you and request you to please bless us with your love and vibrations and purify our being. Purify our heart, our body, our mind. Please allow us to ascend further and further in spirituality. We'll take one mantra to Sri Ganesha. Om Tvameva Sakshat Shri Ganesha Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Pataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha One mantra to Shri Adi Bhumi Devi. Om Dvami Vasakshat Shri Adi Bhumi Devi Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha Slowly bring back both of your hands back into your lap. Raise a few strands of Kundalini energy onto your Sahasrara.
will now listen to a talk <coughs> given by Shri Mataji on the occasion of Easter Puja 1984 in Hampstead, UK. Today we are <coughs> celebrating the resurrection of Christ. With, with it we have to also celebrate the resurrection of human beings, of Sahaja Yogis who have been resurrected as realized souls. With that we have to understand that we enter into a new awareness. There was no need for Christ to enter into any new awareness. He had to come down and again to show to this world that you are the eternal life, that you lead a life that is spiritual, which never perishes. You have to rise into that new realm, which is the realm of God Almighty, what you call the Kingdom of God. And he said it very clearly to Nicodemus that you are to be born again. And when he asked, Am I to enter back into my mother's womb to be born again? I said it's so clear. It's so clear. Those who don't want to see can remain blind. But he said it very, very clearly that no, that is whatever is born of the flesh is the flesh. But whatever is born of the spirit is the spirit. I mean, nothing could be more clear than that, that it has to be born of the Spirit. Of course, human beings have a special capacity to twist everything around. For them, Spirit could be a book, could be some words, could be an organization, a church, or some sort of a thing like that which they have made. But whatever is man-made, is not the Spirit. This is the clear statement of Christ, which people wanted to avoid and start their own organizations, their own ideas, and created a very mythical thing in His name. And now the time has come for it to be blasted. It has been going on and on for thousands of years, captured so many innocent people, and people are into it. But when you are resurrected, when you become realized souls, one has to understand that now your movement is inward. You are moving towards your roots and not outside. So whatever was the endeavor before realization has to be changed. The direction has to be changed. At that point, mostly we miss. 
This is the thing today I'm trying to explain to you. That so far to a human mind, entertainment was important. Entertaining. To the mind, not to the spirit. Entertainment to the spirit is absolutely opposite to the entertainment to the mind. Like somebody the other day telephoned to me and said that, Mother, there is no excitement in Sahaja Yoga. <laughs> the excitement is too much. We are going against that. We are going towards peace not towards excitement and this kind of electric shocks that we require every time. See, a drunkard is all right in the morning, but evening time he goes off. He needs a shock, a, a, some sort of an injection into his body. All human enterprises have been like that. They are to excite your body because if it is the dead you are dealing with, then you have to excite it. But something that is living, that is eternal, you have to enjoy it and not to excite it. So the direction has to be juxtaposition. And that is where many Sahaja Yogis fail to understand. How do we do it is the point. How do we make our attention move inward instead of going outward. If you start Sorry about that. be changed. At that point, mostly we miss. This is the thing today I am trying to explain to you, that so far to a human mind, entertainment was important, entertaining, to the mind, not to the spirit. Entertainment to the spirit is absolutely opposite to the entertainment to the mind. Like somebody the other day telephoned to me and said that, Mother, there is no excitement in Sahaja Yoga. <laughs> the excitement is too much. We are going against that. We are going towards peace, not towards excitement and this kind of electric shocks that we require every time. See, a drunkard is all right in the morning, but evening time he goes off. He needs a shock, a, a, some sort of an injection into his body. All human enterprises have been like that. They are to excite your body, because if it is the dead you are dealing with, then you have to excite it. But something that is living, that is eternal, you have to enjoy it and not to excite it. So the direction has to be juxtaposition. And that is where many Sahaja Yogis fail to understand. How do we do it is the point. How do we 
make our attention move inward instead of going outward. If you start from the time you are born again, it is much easier because it's a new venture into you go in. That is the peace, peace of your spirit, the joy of your spirit, which is permanent. You don't need any excitement from it. It is permanent. It is eternal. So the first thing that comes to our mind is that whatever we do before realization, we have not to do. The first and foremost thing is realization comes to you effortlessly. So the effort which is built in your body all the time, the energy of effort, I must do this, I must do that, I have to do this, I have to do that. That creates tension that I have told you already. So what do we do? We do not try to compete with others. We do not try to fix certain timing, dates, watches. We do not also put our attention into any endeavor which puts us into effort, but we relax that attitude of effort. It's called as, in Sanskrit, prayatna shaitilya. For a Western mind, it's very difficult to grasp the subject. So try to understand. That doesn't mean lethargy. Doesn't mean lethargy. Shan should never confuse with the dead, the energy of the living. Now we are trying to transform our energies towards the energy of the spirit. <coughs> so you have to allow the spirit to take over. Your effort of your mind should be reduced and the energy of the spirit should work through you. Now how do you do it? First is detachment. Detachment. Detachment start with the thought. Let us see the thought. It's called as vichara shaitilya relaxation of the thought. Now a thought is coming into your mind. Some thought, today is Mother's Puja, let's go. They have to hurry up, you say, you must get this, you didn't get the flowers, now you go to the third world and get the flowers, you must get this and you must get that. Second is, no, detach yourself. Witness. Leave it to the spirit. Watch. You'll get it. Many of you have noticed this. But still this mind, which is quite silly, tries to impress upon you that you have to use the old junky instrument of this mind. And it asserts that better use. And when you start using that, Ego comes in, you get attached to it. And you, what you lose is your progress and thus the joy is minimized. How do you detach yourself? For a person who is absolutely detached, it's very difficult to explain how to detach, isn't it? <laughs> I'll try now. <laughs> I cannot get attached, that's the problem is. And I find it difficult to explain to you in words which are human words, 
But still, I'll try to say now. Say I tried something as human beings do in the beginning, just to see how it works out, because I had to experiment. For example, when I had to say attend any puja or anything, I used to ask them, "What is the auspicious time?" So they would tell me, "This is the auspicious time," and then another would telephone to say, "This is the auspicious time." So I said, "How can there be two auspicious times? It's a big problem with human beings." So they said, "There are five panchangas in 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 India. Uh, means five books to consult the auspicious time. That's what human beings have done." I said, "Then why consult? <laughs> It's better not to have five auspicious times. Then the auspicious time is not beyond. Has to be beyond time." But it is bound in the time, the way human beings have made it. So it is bound in the time. Like in India, it is so much, so much, so much. But now here, it's different. Then you calculate. You have a watch. You see, to overcome all these hurdles, human beings also make certain devices. So you consult. Now, what is the auspicious time here? Leave at that time. Then it's a big headache. Because there are five books to be consulted, watch could be wrong, this could be wrong, that could be wrong. But if you are the spirit, then the spirit works out auspiciousness. It is the spirit that works out the auspiciousness. And imagine when you think like that, how much tension goes out. First of all, you have to be a slave of the watch. Another, you have to be the slave of the books. Then you have to be the slave of the market, of the room, of the place which you have to hire. But supposing if you allow the spirit to work it out, then everything will work out, and you will reach at this point where it is the most auspicious. So how do you accept it? Just by accepting. So just now, if you give up your satta, your own domain, you get into the domain of your spirit. You give up your domain. That is your ego's domain, or maybe your super ego's domain. You give up that and try to see things how it works out. Now, what is the testing point? How do you test it? It works out. That's the point of testing. It works out. Allow it to work out. Don't put your attention. Attention has the second part of it, the tension. And don't try to say why not today. It should have happened today. We expected it to happen. Why not at this moment? That's your ego. Die will be done. So the thought that starts moving in our mind all the time, which creates tensions, is not the thought of the spirit. So, what you should say? Not this thought. Not. This thought, yeah, neti neti vacha nee niga mo avochus. Not this thought, not this thought, not this thought. And see how you relax. Now you are relaxed. Not this thought, not this thought. Just go on refusing, accepting any thought. So you go into nirvichara. In that state, you feel the spell. Christ has done the greatest work on this. I should say, but we do not understand because his life was a, a like a micro thing. See, in three years, so we have to open it out a little bit and see what he did. He has given us the greatest weapon of forgiveness. 
When you forgive a person, what do you do? You accept the situation to begin with. And secondly, you forgive what you think has been done wrong to you. But because nothing wrong, nothing can be done wrong to your spirit, you just forgive because you are the spirit. And when you forgive, you have found that your tension goes away. So even to your thoughts, if you say, all right, forgive this thought, forgive this thought, because thought is also not to be punished. Forgive this thought, forgive this thought, forgive everything, not forget, forgive. Because then you will even forget that you are the Spirit. <laughs> but forgive all the thoughts that are coming to me. Just go on saying this is a mantra. What is a mantra? Is that power of the word that expresses spirit. So this is a very important thing Christ has given us, the weapon of forgiveness. Everybody has that weapon. Everyone can use that weapon. You don't have to put in any effort for it. You don't have to pay for it. It's just you have to say, I forgive. You'll be amazed your nerves will suit down. This tension, this pressure of these modern things will be reduced if you go on saying, I forgive. I forgive that. For example, you go and see some sort of a, I mean, if you happen suddenly to see something very filthy according to the spirit, maybe it is very exciting according to normal human beings, but we are abnormal people. And for us, if we find it rather ugly, then the best thing is to get over is to say, I forgive, because they are ignorant, they are blind. They are not yet there where I am. I am the one who is at the source of enjoyment, at the source of peace, and while these are not, so I forgive. And you'll be amazed that this forgiveness that Christ gives works out vichara shaitilya, is the relaxation of the thought. Now this opposite movement that you have to move, first of all, should start at this point today from forgiving others. Now what happens when you forgive someone? That means you do not react. The power to react to somebody's injuries, insults, is finished. And when that power is finished, you become a powerful person. Because nobody can now overpower you. Because nobody can kill you. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can do anything to you. But it is not again, I'll say, shamelessness. See, people can think that it is shamelessness. So, if somebody says to you something harsh and something that is wrong, you do not accept it. But supposing I shout at someone, the bhūts run away. You have seen that many a times I have to shout at people, so bhūts run away because they react and they just run. But the spirit shines through. So. In Sahaja Yoga one has to understand that it is just the central path, it's just the balancing thing which is important, it's not an extreme of anything. Like when we go to say that you must forgive everyone, it's not going to that extreme where you have done some wrong and somebody says to you, you don't take that part of it. It doesn't mean that. Again, 
discretion is the engine of your movement. So you have to see that if they have said it, something like that, is it have I gone against the spirit? Otherwise, if I say to you something, you will say, all right, forgive mother. You see the point? Forgive her for saying so. No. You cannot say that to me. So then, that is the point you start thinking. Why mother said so? What have I done? Now think on those lines. So you start moving again. It's a very thin road on which you have to walk. One side is the huge, big Gibraltar, rock of Gibraltar of your ego. The another side is a super ego. In between is a small discretion path going on which you have to see both the sides. Whether you are hitting yourself with the rock of Gibraltar or falling into the valley of superego, you should see that you are using your discretion. So the another thing one has to remember that whatever you are doing before realization is to go to extreme. For example, now you start some sort of a movement. Say you say we'll have classical things, all right. Then you go so classical that it becomes mechanical. Now you'll say give up, we'll start anti-culture. So you go to another side that you become primitive. Till you have reached the end of it and learnt a lesson of your life, you do not return. But in Sahaja Yoga, it's a very slippery road on which we are walking. And there you have to see that it's not your ego and it is not your super. So discretion has to be used very much and the balance in this movement, which we need not use otherwise. Till we are absolutely destroyed, we can go ahead with it before realization. But in Sahaja Yoga, as soon as you leave your discretion, you fall this side or that side. Now those people who are of high quality, Sahaja Yogis, check to discretion first, how far to go. Now for that mother doesn't have to say because you are the spirit. You yourself, you are the spirit. First of all, assume your position as a spirit and then move with it that you say discreetly how far to go, how far not to go. Now that is one of the things that you have to become thoughtless by becoming a forgiving person. Most of the thoughts will drop out once you become forgiving. But you cannot forgive some people, like you cannot forgive God, you cannot forgive Mother. Certain things you cannot do. So the maryadas must be seen. Now in these boundaries, if you walk properly, you can go ahead. This is the thing which brings you vichara shaitilya or you can call the mind becomes relaxed.
Let's bring our right hand on our forehead. Bend our head towards the ground. And from your heart say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Mother, I forgive myself. Mother, I forgive everyone. And I forgive myself. Mother, I forgive these thoughts. I forgive myself. I forgive everyone. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. Jai Mataji. Happy Easter, Mother. Happy Easter to all of you wonderful Sahaj Yogis. May you have a lovely day and a lovely year ahead. Let's all now bow down to Shimataji. And let's say the three great mantras. Om Tvami Vasakshat Shri Mahalakshmi Mahasaraswati Mahakali Trigodatmika Kundalini Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha Om Tvami Vasakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha Om Tvami Vasakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahastrar Swamini Moksha Pradayini Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namu Namaha Thank 
Please continue to be in meditation for as long as you like. Then raise your Kundalini and put on a bandha. And once again, happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter, Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji.